Awanda Forest Recreation Area is resplendent with bird resources. Here, you can easily spot Steers Lyocyclus, Taiwan Yuhinas, and Swinho's Pheasants. There are also some other birds, including Greenback Tits, Taiwan Tits, White-throated Flycatcher Warblers, and Eurasian Nuthatches that nest in the nesting boxes. These birds also nest and breed in natural tree holes. They are grouped as the secondary cavity nesting birds. The Nanto Forest District Office cooperated with the Endemic Species Research Institute and designed elaborate nesting boxes to attract these birds to nest in so that they can observe their breeding cycles and uncover their secret lives. To identify each individual bird for inspection, the researchers carefully put bands on the feet of each. Since then, these tenants of Awanda have all had special identification. This is the king of Awanda, wearing a yellow and an orange band. Since the moment the researchers banded it in the spring of 2005, they have completely recorded every single move it has been making at Awanda. In the early spring of 2005, there was an unusual snowstorm around this area, but it did not knock him down. He came back to nest another week and had three clutches that year. Strength and resourcefulness makes him the king of Awanda. This is his mate, Miss Greengrass. Strictly speaking, Greengrass is the real queen of the forest. In the world of green-backed tits, only the females have the right to choose their mates. The male can only wait for his chance to please the female. It can be traced back to the year 2003 in which green grass showed up at Awanda. During the long-term study, she has had a long history of romance. She has had a total of four mates and has used the nesting boxes 11 times. This productive female bird has successfully bred and raised many offspring. You can say that she is the queen of the forest. King is her fourth mate. They met in the spring of 2005. In early March 2006, the researchers found them nesting in nesting box number A14. It looks like they won again this year. They have become the first guests in the Awanda honeymoon cabins. The duty of hatching the eggs is done by the female alone. After the laying of five eggs of the full clutch, the queen is responsible for hatching them. The incubation period is 15 days. During this period, the queen is unable to go out to seek food. In the meantime, the thoughtful king brings food back to her on time.
After the baby birds have hatched, both parents take on the jobs of taking care of the babies. During the nestling period, the parents need to fly back and forth to feed the babies more than 120 times. It takes 21 days to raise the nestlings to fledge. Food is the most important thing in birds' lives. The main food of the greenback tits is insects. Butterfly and moth larvae make up 60% of their diet. Praying mantises and spiders sometimes show up on this menu as well. This is a neighbor of kings, who the researchers have named Zhuangzhu. The accommodation area is its territory. It lives under the eaves of the maple house. Zhuangzhu and King live very close to each other, and sometimes they will accidentally fly into each other's territories. This will lead to a confrontation. In the bird's world, making even an accidental incursion into another bird's territory is very dangerous. They will often fight to protect their territory or mates. While the green-backed tits are arguing, a pair of Eurasian nuthatches has started breeding like a raging fire. Usually, the breeding season for Eurasian nuthatches is a month earlier than for the green-backed tits, Taiwan tits, and white-throated flycatcher warblers. They become marvelously alive each year during the unpleasantly cold weather in February under the cherry blossoms. The Eurasian nuthatches, which appear to be head over heels, use a unique mating dance to show their love. The little wood chip that the female is holding in her beak is a delicate gift from the male bird. It looks like this courting trick has worked well. Sharing the same fate as the female green-backed tits, this female Eurasian nuthatch has been confined to her nest for a while. Squatting and lying on the eggs for such a long time takes a lot of strength out of her. She is sound asleep. At this moment, the male comes back to visit with food. It is the happiest part of the day for the mother bird when she spies the father returning to the nest with food as a reward. In this period, she has to handle the job of minding the nest alone for about 18 days until the baby birds have hatched. During the incubation period, they keep adding nesting materials to the nest. The nests of Eurasian nuthatches are made of bark. They like to put a thick layer of mud around the entrance hole of the nests. This is to make the hole smaller to prevent natural enemies like snakes and mice coming into the nests. The birds in Awanda use different nesting materials. Eurasian nuthatches like to use bark. While green-backed tits and Taiwan tits prefer moss, lichen, fur and artificial fibers. White-throated flycatcher warblers like to use bamboo leaves and pine needles in their nests. As to their dietary habits, green-backed tits and Taiwan tits both prefer the larvae of Lepidoptera. And Eurasian nuthatches like worms that hide under bark.
The small-sized white-throated flycatcher warblers are fond of little flying bugs, such as diptera and hymenoptera. Taking a closer look, we found out that the birds that prefer flying bugs all have firm hairs around the rim of the beaks. White-throated flycatcher warblers are the most typical example. The babies of king are gradually growing up. By next week, the king and queen's babies will be ready to leave the nest. King often leans to the side so that he can take a good look at the babies. He seems to feel content when looking at them. The next morning, the little green-backed tits were all gone. King and Queen were left chirping with grief on the nearby cliffs. They were probably eaten by snakes during the night. Snakes eat small birds, but sometimes they become the food of big-sized birds like crested serpent eagles and blue magpies. In the year 2004, there was an incident of a stint rat snake attacking the nest of a Eurasian nuthatch and eating all the babies. The mission to breed cannot stop. Soon enough, king and queen pull themselves together. Seven days after their babies had gone missing, there was good news from a new nest in nesting box number A10. To supplement his continuing labor, King goes to the accommodation area to look for food every morning. Many birds have gathered in this spot in the very early morning. The reason that the early birds are catching the worms here is because of the street lamps. These lamps attract a huge amount of bugs during the night. By the time the sun comes up, these bugs have partied all night long and provide an excellent meal for the birds. The monsoon season in May has arrived. Near the toll booth of the recreation area, the babies of the green-backed tits in nesting box number D8 are ready to leave the nest. The continuous rain has made the mother bird soaking wet from foraging. She uses some time after feeding to clean the nest and to warm herself up with the body heat of her babies. While the rain breaks off, Pacific swallows use this rare chance to bask in the sun. Meanwhile, King and his queen are busy feeding babies that have a huge appetite. They do not have time to enjoy the sun. The appetite of the six babies is like a bottomless hole. They never seem to have enough food. Survival in nature is fraught with danger. It is always a big day when it's time for the babies to finally fledge. These are neighbors of King. They live in nesting box number A36. Their feathers are full and their wings are strong. They cannot wait any longer. They are jumping up and down in the nest. Some of them left the nest earlier.
Although there is no rule stating that all the baby birds must leave at the same time, at the other side of Awanda, in the forest park, the babies in box number B28 are also old enough to leave the nest and fly into the bosom of the forest. According to the long-term study, the breeding success rate of green-backed tits is only 50%. In nest box number A31, six eggs were laid out about the same time as the queen laid her first clutch, but unfortunately they failed to hatch. The last time the researchers saw the female incubating was on April 8th. She never came back after that. At Awanda, there is another race of tit, the Taiwan tits. They are one of Taiwan's endemic species. During 2006, there was evidence that two pairs of Taiwan tits were nesting in the nesting boxes. One was in the bird watching trail area, and the other one was in the forest park. Taiwan tits are not used to facing cameras. The mother bird is easily startled when incubating. As soon as she hears something, she leaves the nest right away. Compare this to the female greenbacked tit, which exhibits more stable behavior. This might not be boldness, however. Maybe she is just too scared to flee. The nestlings of the Taiwan tit, as usual, after loudly fighting for food and quickly finishing it, pass stools. It must be the noise from the outside. The female bird is distracted and goes outside. She neglects to pick up the stool and leaves. These smaller varieties of birds using the nesting boxes are not the only ones at Awanda. Big, beautiful, and vicious Taiwan blue magpies are also a famous breeding bird here. Instead of nest boxes, Taiwan blue magpies nest on tree branches. They are also endemic to Taiwan. They exhibit a special behavior during the feeding period. The helpers at the nest system. After 38 days of hard work, including a 16-day incubation period and a 22-day nestling period, King and Queen's second brood of babies has finally grown up. We can see the babies stretching their wings in the nest frequently. It's time. These little guys are, one by one, called to go out of the nest by their parents. Even the slow birds fly at last. This one leaves the nest around noon, finally. King and queen are really productive. As soon as their second brood fledged, they laid a third clutch in box number A9. The offspring should leave the nest between late summer and early autumn. The changing weather at Awanda reminds us that autumn is on its way. It is getting cooler than before. After the stress-filled breeding period, and the associated concerns of limited territory and resources, the uneasiness seems to cool down along with the weather.
King and his other companions have remained in Awanda Forest Recreation Area. They still go to the street lamp to find bugs in the early morning every day. While having his big meal, he runs into the male who nested in box number A31 two months ago with his offspring. Maybe next year, these birds will still come back to these familiar nesting boxes to breed again, and the bustling and happy seasons in Awanda will continue much as they always have. <laughs>